I um, grew up in New Jersey, far from the forest, and uh, went to Dartmouth in New Hampshire and loved that part of it. Thank you. And then I went to UCLA for my PhD in, in molecular biology, and uh, and then to Oregon State where I did a postdoc where we met, and then down to LA for virus production for in insect pest control in Northwest, and then here. So I've been around, and um, so I'm not really a, a pesticide guy. I'm a, I'm a good biochemist basically, so I can tell you a little bit about glyphosate. I keep wanting to say glyphosate. <laughs> Everybody have that problem? I know. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. It sounds so much better than glyphosate. Yeah. But actually, I'll show you how it works. It's pretty quite simple. It's a uh, it's a simple chemical with a simple um, reason for the name actually. So it's not hard to figure it out. There we go. Yeah, then just to take the whole thing apart. All right, takes a minute to solve this. This yeah, should be all right. Mm -hmm. Get in there. <clears throat> no source now. Huh? This is not good. Come on. You can do this. Oh, I am there. It's worked before. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's good. Ah, there. Exactly. There. Yeah. there you go. All right, good. Now this somehow, I don't know how to do all this fancy stuff, so I'm, I'm just playing, I'm going to play the slideshow here. So this is, <coughs> this is glyphosate. Glyphosate. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done glyphosate, I'll show you why that's. It's a really simple molecule, actually, and um, that's a lovely picture of it. So the reds are oxygen, the whites are hydrogen, and the uh, blacks are carbon. And the one that's, the phosphate is on the right side, that's, a, that's the orange one. So it's basically phosphate. Nothing big about phosphate and glycine, which is an amino acid. One of your essential, not essential, you can make it glycine. Everybody can make glycine, but it's, it's the amino acid. So <clears throat> the reason that it has its name is gly is from glycine and phosphate, phosphate is phosphate. So you can imagine that it's simply phosphate. Here's, here's the glycine here, and this is the phosphate, so gly phosphate. The uh, synthesis is incredibly, it's dirt cheap synthesis. It comes at zero cost, essentially. If you're selling, I heard some numbers like $8,000 for 8,000 grams or some crazy number. It's, that's, that's not glyphosate. Glyphosate has tons of other things in it, but uh, Roundup does. But uh, the chemical itself is very straightforward. And it has two ways uh, of breaking down in the environment or in, in the body. Uh, one is to lose the phosphate. So you can see the PI coming off here. So there's the phosphate there, and here's the PI coming off to make that chemical. And these all have chemical names that you don't need to know. The other one that's more common, uh, and that is actually the most common one, this is the other one where it actually breaks at the nitrogen in the middle and then makes these two products which both end up as free phosphate, a little ammonia, and carbon dioxide, all harmless chemicals. One of the things I'm struck about this chemical is, is that it's smaller than most uh, enzyme inhibitors are. That's what it is, it's an enzyme inhibitor. And when you see an enzyme inhibitor, it has to fit into the active site of an enzyme. An enzyme's a protein, a big, massive protein, you know, several hundred thousand Daltons of, this is maybe about 110 Daltons or 200 Daltons or something like that. Daltons of one proton. And um, it has the, the amazing ability to fit into the, into the active site. I'll show you how that works. But the phosphate's got all these, uh, these O's and, uh, and charges on it. There's negative charges all here, and this is, this is a negative charge here. And these are positives and oxygen. So there's lots of places where it can interact with the amino acids inside of, a, inside of a, uh, an enzyme. And that's what really makes it so, so unique uh, as a chemical, because it's got a lot of places to interact with. The, action, the mode of action is really simple. And it's, it's uh, remarkable because, and this is why everybody seems to love this chemical, is because it only works on plants. This is called a, <coughs> the shikimate. There's a, as a Japanese flower, where in, you know, many, many years ago, somebody discovered this, this pathway in plants. And it's called the shikimate pathway. And, and essentially, this is taking, this is, if you've ever had any biochemistry, this is something that just came back to me in my head. I had this about 30,000 times in my, in my graduate days. Phosphoenolpyruvate is a, the last step before glycolysis. You take sugar, glucose, and you by digestion make a few ATPs, and you go to 
PDP, phosphorinopyruvate, and then you go, you break off the phosphate, this phosphate goes away, and that leaves the substrate pyruvate, which goes into the mitochondria, where you make all your, 90% you know, of your ATP is made. So this is a pretty important uh, substrate, the, the PDP, and this is a, the shikimate is the way giving you this aromatic ring, which is going to become part of the three amino acids that this, that this pathway leads to. So why is this thing toxic to plants and not to you and me in its gross, you know, sort of superficial form? It's because the plants need to make tyrosine, phenylalanine, and tryptophan. Those are the three amino acids. There's 20 amino acids. They're all different looking and different chemistries. But the three of them that we don't make, plants make for us. So this is all from plants. There's microbes that can make these as well. Uh, and that's another part of the story. But for, mo for the most part, we're dealing with plants. And this, this chemical, these two chemicals making this chemical, uh, it's a... Uh, uh, SP, whatever it is, the enzyme. EPSP is this chemical. Enol phosphate, uh, sycamate phosphate. EPSP is the abbreviation for that. And the enzyme synthase is the enzyme we're going to be talking about. E e ESPS, EPSP synthase is the enzyme we're going to be talking about. That's the enzyme that this chemical uh, glyphosate works against. Got any, any questions or problems with all that? Sure. You're saying that it's toxic to plants, but not animals. We don't have this pathway. Okay. We don't even have that enzyme. Mm -hmm. Then is it mis? Is there misinformation about it uh, causing things like um, ailments? You know? No, they're not. No. If, uh, as you'll see later, okay. if you eat this stuff, you'll die. <laughs> you will physically die. So yeah, it's not it's not not toxic in that kind of a, of a thing. But yeah, it, and this and the dosages which are supposedly safe, quote safe, this enzyme is inhibited, and you don't suffer at all. Trust me. No, don't say that. Okay. So. <laughs> all right. So that's how the enzyme the the uh, the glyphosate works. So remember. This enzyme pathway, this substrate leads to the three amino acids. Where are they? Tyrosine, phenylalanine, and tryptophan. Mm -hmm. Three of the 20 amino acids you make that we need to grow. They're essential for humans. They're essential for all animals. No animal has this pathway. Therefore, this is a selective herbicide. It only hits plants, theoretically, and microbes. But see, microbes are the other story here because we also have microbes in our gut which would be inhibited by that chemical as well. <laughs> That's not, it's not the only thing. So, here's the perfect apple orchard. You just walk along your little orchard and you spray glyphosate and it kills all plants <laughs> in your thing, except the stuff you're, you're talking about, your, your, uh, your targets. Now, this one would only have killed the, since there's no leaves down here, you're only killing the stuff that's on the ground and not the, the apple trees themselves. That's the way it's supposed to look and that's, you know, it's been used for now almost 30 years um, uh, as Roundup. Roundup was the start of it uh, because it was invented by a chemist at, at uh, Monsanto. And um, <coughs> the, the idea is that you can always spray this stuff at any plant, that you, and you sort of get into the, the science of this thing, uh, any plant to theoretically become resistant with one base change, one single base. There's thousands of bases in the gene for that enzyme. Okay? Mm -hmm. Plants are sensitive. Naturally, plants are sensitive. To get resistance, you need to change one amino acid, and that's it. One amino acid is one base pair out of your millions and millions of base pairs. One change can make you resistant. So obviously, resistance is arising and has, you know, is coming to be more of a problem, and we'll see that later. Um, so basically, what happened was Monsanto patented, found in this microbac, it's a agrobacterium. Ag agrobacterium it's a, it's a microbe, it needs to make these three amino acids, so it has this pathway. And they isolated the gene in, in, the, uh, in Agrobacter, which was using the same chemistry to make the same three amino acids, but it was resistant to glyphosate. It didn't have any effects. Glyphosate, glyphosate didn't have any effect. So they basically, th this is a fun, this is like, you know, it was, when I first heard this when I was a scientist, back in, uh, when I was a grad student, uh, they were using shotguns, literally shooting at plants with a gun, with a shotgun. They would take these gold particles and they'd, they'd coat them with the gene from Agrobacterium, which was the, the resistant gene, right? This is the gene that's got, can take 
glyphosate. It doesn't matter. And they would bang, shoot the plant, and all the gold particles would go into the plant. Some would get incorporated into the nucleus, whatever. They would grow the plants up and then add glyphosate. If you don't mind it, you're good. you got a new plant. So you just kept doing this and doing this and doing this until the plant got the gene shot into it by the gold particle. It dissociated from the gold, got into the chromosome of the plant that thereafter, whatever species it was, it was soybeans, it was corn, whatever it was, and the plant is now resistant. And that's Roundup ready. Okay, so that's where this whole, this whole this stuff is coming from. C4, CP4, EPSP is the gene from agrobacterium that has been put into all these plants to make them resistant to Roundup. The natural gene is resistant to, gly to glyphosate. So they just put it in everything they want to grow in the presence of glyphosate. Okay? Uh, so this is it. So uh, if it binds, if it, it, and all it took was one amino acid change. The 100th amino acid in the enzyme is normally alanine. If it goes to glycine, it's resistant. So yeah, it works both ways. If you can get a mutation that can give you resistance, you can have sensitivity going, sorry, resistance going back to sensitivity. So, so the, re the reason for that is so that they can spray a field, kill all the weeds and the soybeans or whatever survive. That's what Roundup Ready is about. Yeah, maybe yeah. I didn't say that, make that clear. So all the plants that they're trying to clone, the GMOs, are contain the agrobacterium gene in their genomes, and they're resistant to, to glyphosate, mm -hmm. Roundup. They're called Roundup Ready plants. And there's every plant you can imagine has been done this way now. It's just, it's not a big deal to do this. Genetic engineering is it, pretty simple. So by the same token, if you can take an amino acid from a plant like dandelion or whatever else weed you've got, and you treat it over and over and over and over millions and millions of times with glyphosate, you're going to find the odd amino acid change in one plant that's already resistant. This is the way it's not, it doesn't change the amino acid. The amino acid has already changed before you add the glyphosate to the field of potentially sensitive dandelions, whatever. And the, the resistant plant is the one that grows. It's already resistant. It didn't have to be say, you know, it's, it's natural selection in its sort of quick chemical form. We do this in the lab where we would take a, a bacterium that was normally sensitive to a virus and grow a million of them and we infect it with the virus. And there was always one in a million surviving viruses. They were already there. I mean, surviving cells. They were already there. The viruses would kill all the others. You know, 999,999, and there would be one survivor because the DNA had already changed to make it resistant to the virus. And that's the way it, it, that's the way it works. So you don't generate a mutation to make the change. It already exists, and all you're doing is selecting for it. Um, so that's the thing. Now, genetic pollution. This is really some, ma some amazing stuff. Um, the plants that, ha that are Roundup Ready resistant, or Roundup Ready, which are resistant to glyphosate, obviously have pollen. The corn, the wheat, all this stuff has pollen. There has been recorded instances of 20 kilometers of drift of that pollen getting into the same species elsewhere and giving it glyphosate resistance. It's amazing. So, uh, so <laughs> that's why this genetic pollution. It's not just the you know the stuff that the seeds that sort of spill out of the truck on the way down. It's actually the, the pollen itself uh, is uh, is getting around. And also, there's ways for for plants to share the little. Uh, uh, plasmids that have this resistance on them, they can also just sort of transfer it around. So there's a lot, there's going to be a lot of resistance, not any more than you would expect, because there's always resistance, right? You always have resistance in plants with whoever treatment you give it. The other thing I thought that was interesting in one of my one of the papers I found was that in cotton, when you're developing the, the cotton, I think is a, is a kind of a plant that flowers and fertilize, it's self fertilizing. It's uh, what's the word for that? You know, or they're, they're androgynous or something. They're both yeah. male and female yeah, parts. Yeah. This, when you have a Roundup Ready cotton, and you feed and you treat it with glyphosate, the stamen grows longer, and it doesn't fertilize. It doesn't. It, it's supposed to be close to the to the pistil, and it grows so long that it can't reach the the, the pollen. Don't get back, and you get really lousy yields. So it's not all pretty, even for the plant folks, because when you start treating cotton. For instance, with uh, glyphosate to protect, to uh, kill all the weeds, you're also reducing the yields of, uh, mm -hmm. of cotton. Mm -hmm. So this is now the most 
frequently used, the most highest volume of pesticide, herbicide in the world. This is the, the number of, uh, of plants that have become resistant to glyphosate is corn, soybeans, wheat, cotton, vegetables and fruit, uh, rice, right. orchards and grapes, alfalfa, pasture and hay, and other crops. You can see where the corn is coming. The corn is, it, and, and also the soybeans. Soybeans were first. You can see that here. First the soybeans, and now corn. And corn's going crazy. 90% of the corn planted in the U.S. is glyphosate resistant. Is Roundup ready? That's a pretty amazing number. Now, you expect to see some resistance to glyphosate showing up, and of course it is. And I, this is not the. This is this thing. Another amino acid pathway that plants have. ALS, it's, uh, it's, it's been around for a lot longer. It's been around since, well, it's since 1990 here, but uh, anyway. The, but you can see this, the blue one, this is glyphosate. Well, glyphosate didn't have any resistance at all until about 2000, but you saw from the previous slide that its, it's use is skyrocketing. skyrocketing. So uh, resistance is rising, and it'll be a common problem. And that leads to another problem for us. What do we do? Here's some of the weeds that have become resistant. And uh, I don't know much about any of the ones that ryegrass everybody knows about, but I didn't know what the other ones were, but there they are. They're already resistant to glyphosate. Okay, now this, this is the part that I, that I had the most fun with, because this is where I more or less grew up. Um, human health uh, and human toxicity. Uh, yeah, you know, I, w I was always impressed with it. You can kill yourself with almost anything if you drink too, eat it, too much of it. It was people who were eating, um, what was it? Oh, this was another pesticide, actually. I can't remember the name of it, but they would eat it, think, oh, my wife left me, oh, you know. and, then, and then nothing would happen. <laughs>